So we've had plenty of talk about the Informac Mini, its storage limitations, issues, and I've done plenty of videos on the channel for different kinds of solutions, whether it be an external hard drive or a dock that implements some sort of drive in there that kind of helps the situation so you don't have to go spending a bunch of money on the Apple website in order to get that higher storage. Something I've never experienced and never used so far is a NAS system. And for those of you out there that don't know what NAS stands for, trust me, I didn't know either. It's network attached storage. Think of it as your own personal cloud service, so like Google Drive, but something that's stored locally and doesn't have any monthly fees. And then when Ugreen reached out and asked if I wanted to check out their NAS Sync DXP 4800 Plus system, I jumped at the opportunity because why not? It's something that I could really benefit from. And although I haven't used NAS systems before, especially ones by Ugreen, I've got other creative friends which have and do still use them and they've been pretty positive on their experiences. So I'm pretty optimistic that this should be a great fit for me, especially since it's supposed to be a very good beginner NAS system, which is very beneficial for me because it's going to be the first one I'm using. So one of the things I am happy about that I've heard is the installation and setup process should be pretty easy. And we'll check that out in the video if it actually is. Now, something to note is I'm not a network specialist by any means. So although I'm going to try my best to take you through this installation setup and talk about this NAS system, there may be things that you want to know which I can't answer. So let me know in the comments box below and it will either be me answering or hopefully somebody else answering that knows the answer. But yeah. If it's your first time here, my name is Almi aka Mr. H Tech. On this channel, we make tech simple. If I do earn your subscription, hit that subscribe button down below. Like the video if you do like it. Share it with your friends and family who also might be interested in this kind of content. Because in this video, we're going to be unboxing it, taking a look at the system, seeing how easy it is to set up, go through some of the features and some of the benefits that apply to me, which may also apply to you. So let's check out the NASSYNC DXP 4800 Plus system by Ugreen. So first thing we've got, is a box on one side, which pretty hefty accessory box. In the accessory box, we get on the left hand side a screwdriver with some screws, and we get two Ethernet cables, which is a nice addition because this system does actually have two Ethernet ports, and then you get two thermal pads because you can actually install NVMe drives in here as well as the standard hard drives. Then of course you have manual and warranty card, power brick. So I'll pop it there. I've got to say they have made it look very nice. And usually with these NAS systems, they're made to like hide in a different room. You just connect it to your network and you don't think about it. With this one, it seems like Ugreen has really put in the effort to make it very aesthetic, so you can have it in your office. It's definitely something you can have next to your setup if you want or in the vicinity, depending on obviously which drives you get and how loud it can get. You can actually send out these Western Digital Red Plus drives. I've got four four terabyte ones. Now, they're not the fastest drives out there by far, but something they are is silent. So they're meant to be quite silent, which is gonna be good because if I'm gonna be using this NAS system in the office here, it's not a very big space. And I would probably prefer to have something that's a bit quieter than something that's a little bit faster. But there is a bunch of different drives on the compatibility list with the link in the description. And it constantly gets updated with people as they use different drives. So you'll know if your drive is compatible with the one you want to get for the actual system. So we do get this magnetic dust mesh filter, which is a nice little touch. And if you want to take it off, you pull it off because it is magnetic. So on the back we get one HDMI port because you can use this as a media server as well. So watch stuff from. You've got one USB 3.2 port which is USB A, and then you've got two USB A 2.0 ports. And then like I said, you've got two LAN ports. So you've got one 2.5 gig one and then one 10 gig one, which might be beneficial for a lot of people out there with these 10 gig networks. For me, I don't have anything in here that's 10 gig port. Even my Informic Mini, I didn't upgrade to the 10 gig Ethernet port because I didn't really need it. Maybe that's something I should have done, but it is what it is. And then you've got reset button and a DC power on button. And then on the front, we have your four HD slots. You've got a bunch of indicators on the bottom with LED lights. 
tell you about the different disks and the LAN network, power button I assume, SD card slot, USB-C slot, and a USB-A 3.2, which I've got to say, they do know how to make a nice bit of equipment. Looks very nice. It kind of looks, doesn't look that intimidating when you're uh, as a beginner, which I think is something they went for on purpose. And here we've got the actual tool that unlocks, unlocks the hard drive base. And then once you do unlock it, all you have to do is press that button on the bottom where the locking mechanism is, and it'll open up this slot, take it out, and that's where we're gonna place our hard drives. You can actually have 112 terabytes of storage in this unit for your own personal backup and stuff like that. You've got four slots on the front, which in each can house 24 terabytes, and then using the actual two NVMe slots on there, they can each house eight terabytes as well. So that is plenty of storage. Next thing we're gonna do is unbox these hard drives and show you how to actually put them into the slots on the front. And then we'll go through the setup process when we go to the machine. The thing I really like about this setup is the fact it's tool free. So you do get these screwdriver and screws in the actual accessory box, but that's not needed to install the hard drives. They're just for the underside if you want to upgrade that RAM or the two NVMe slots in there. But otherwise, you can just unlock the front using the special tool, press this slot, it opens up. When you pull out the actual cage, underneath you've got a press button, which when you press it, you can extend the cage a slight bit, just enough to fit the hard drive in, nice and easy. And once the hard drive does go in there, you've got these little nibs that fit into the holes of the hard drive. So once you do that, let me put that in. So hard drive into one side first, make sure it's in place. And then on the other side, it will clip into place and then it won't come undone until you press that button again. So nice and secure in there now. And all you have to do is slide it in and you're done. Now I can really see why they call this a beginner NAS system or the perfect beginner NAS system because that was super easy to do. And I can't imagine anyone actually having trouble with that. So now I just have to repeat the process three more times to install all the NAS drives. Then we're gonna connect it up to the machine and load up that software and see how easy it is to set up. So now that the NAS is actually connected to my router, it should be on my LAN network. So now we have to find it in the actual web browser. So you want to boot up your web browser and type in find.ugnas.com and then it will start searching for any type of these Ugreen NASs you have on the LAN. Mine's come up straight away. Obviously it's not initialized because I've literally just connected it. So now I can select connect and go through the step-by-step -step process. So let's see how actually easy this is to set up. Is it as easy as they say? Click connect and initialize. So this part's gonna take around 10, 20 minutes. So I will come back once it's done. The important bit, it's going to be creating the actual storage and pool deciding which kind of NAS system you want to incorporate. So let's do create. This is where you get to choose which kind of RAID type you want. You've got JBoard, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10. Now the required one, if you have four or at least three drives, and I've got four in there, so the required one is RAID 5. Gives you probably one of the better data protections. Even if one of the hard drives gets damaged, the data is still restorable. So unlike some of the other ones, so like, for example, if you choose the JBoard one, if one drive gets damaged, the data on that drive is permanently lost. Whereas on the RAID 5, even if one drive does get damaged for whatever reason, you're still able to get your data off the whole thing. So you won't be losing anything. So I think I'm going to go for RAID 5, the recommended one. Go on next. Now, something I do like going through this whole setup process is I can see why they say it's a beginner system. They've made everything super easy and nicely explained so every little setting you're clicking on it explains what it is it explains what it does which one you should go for and i think that's really going to help a lot of people that are trying to get a nas system because it will save you so much time trying to search online what is this what is that which one should i choose it tells you straight away which one you should choose and why and why it may be a good option for you next storage pool 10.8 terabytes Yes, terabytes, not gig of data. Um, volume one, 10.8 terabytes. So let's create that volume. 
All the data obviously is going to be formatted once you're setting up this RAID, but for me, because they're brand new drives anyway, it doesn't really matter, they're empty as far as I'm concerned. So format it, we have to put our password in obviously to validate that. So, and now it's creating the pool. So, oh, it's all done. So that took a couple of seconds, three settings complete. New Ugreen NAS is ready to go. So far the settings process, Ugreen have done a very good job. That's been very easy to do. So another thing we're gonna do is test how fast we can actually upload data to the NAS compared to say another cloud service you would use, like say Google Drive, for example, and see if the NAS is actually faster because obviously you're gonna be able to access files and stuff remotely from no matter where you are. So it's very similar to a cloud service, but this one will be secure to you and it's gonna be just for you stored on your local hard drives at home or at the office, wherever you may put them. So let's leave this to optimize and sync and then we can go through some of the settings and features and see what else you can do. Everything's now set up and I've been using it for a little bit. And something I wanted to say before I get to the results of that 10 gig file I did uploading to Google Drive and uploading to the NAS at separate times to see which one does it faster, is that you can actually get access to the NAS by a couple of different ways. You can use the website, use the link, put in your credentials and log in that way. Or you can actually use the app. And if you are gonna use the app, I would say, Download the app from the Ugreen NAS website for macOS if you want to do it that way. Because if I did it through the App Store and it gave me the app that goes to iPad, it seems. So when you're doing it through iPad or iPhone, you can do it through the App Store. But if you're doing it on macOS, I would say better off doing it through the Ugreen NAS website to get the right app. Now on the app, there's a bunch of different stuff. And there is a bunch of programs on that app which come preloaded. And there's a bunch that you can install separately in the actual App Center. One of them being the photos one, which is pretty cool because it uses AI to categorize your photos. So you can upload a bunch of or thousands of photos and it's gonna use AI to categorize them for you when it comes to people, places, locations, even pets. So that should save you a lot of time. And another thing you've got on there is security manager, which is gonna do real-time tracking of the files to make sure there's no malicious software or files hanging about. So it should keep you pretty safe and does it real time, you can turn it on, turn it off, whatever you want to do. So I finished that file upload speed test because I wanted to see the speed between uploading to between a NAS and uploading to Google Drive, for example, because Google Drive is something I use quite often and the results were shocking. So something to bear in mind first is with the NAS, I'm not utilizing that 10 gig connection and I've got slower Western Digital Red Drives in there, which are more silent and something I'm prioritizing more than the speed. If I was in a bigger place, Maybe I would go for more enterprise drives, which are faster and a little bit louder because it wouldn't bother me. Now I want it to be silent. So these drives are perfect because that 10 gig file uploaded to the NAS in around two minutes. And then I wanted to see on Google Drive how fast it would upload. So I put it to upload to Google Drive. Didn't even let it finish to be honest with you because I let it go for around two and a half minutes. And even by then it was saying it needed an hour and 35 to an hour and 40 minutes left. Yeah, that slow. So you can really see how much faster it is to upload to a NAS and how much more beneficial it is, not only for the speed difference, but that same file now that I've uploaded to NAS, I can access through any different device I want. So I can access it through my iPad. I can even access it through my iPhone using the Ugreen NAS app, which is a very, very nice looking app and very easy to maneuver around. So I've got the app loaded up, go to files, go to the YouTube folder where I uploaded the app and it's right there. Or uploaded the video. Now I can watch the video on live in 4K quality, download it, do what I want with it. I can scrub through it and it works perfectly fine. And that's something very beneficial to me, especially when I go to these tech events, I can record content, I can unload it, offload it, upload it, do whatever I want with it to the Ugreen NAS, clear the SD card and start recording for the next piece of footage I need, saving myself peace of mind and space on the SD card. Then I know my storage is safe on the NAS. Now, Obviously with Google Drive, if you want that higher storage, you're gonna be paying a monthly subscription service. The NAS is not free. You will pay a startup cost to get the NAS and some hard drives to get you started. So if you are gonna grab one, now is probably one of the best times to get one. But yeah, like I was mentioning that Google Drive, you're gonna be paying a monthly subscription fee. Whereas on the NAS, you'll pay a one-time cost, no monthly fees, and you know your data is safe and sound. Access it from anywhere, from any device. Now. 
Something I'm a big advocate of is if you watch this channel is external drives and external drives are very good, especially for Thunderbolt 5 ones, Thunderbolt 4 ones for the Mac. And I'll still probably use them for editing from instead of upgrading my Mac mini because that's a good system I have. But something that can happen is you can lose these drives because oftentimes they are quite small. They can get misplaced. And if you lose them, there's nothing worse than having vital content especially as a creator, having content that you recorded for a brand or something, and then that content being lost with that external drive. So uploading stuff to the NAS as a backup is going to be very beneficial. Still going to use external drives for certain different scenarios. But yeah, so far from what I've seen from that Ugreen NAS, very, very positive. I can really see why they say it's a beginner-friendly NAS because the menu interface is very nice, very Apple-esque. And then when you're going through the app and uploading files and whatnot, everything is super simple, especially that installation process, telling you exactly what every stage is. And when you're going through the RAID process, I love that it showed you each different type of RAID you can do, what it's good for, what it's not good for, the risks involved, and then it can let you make up your mind which one you want to do. So that was me setting up the Ugreen NAS Sync DXP 4800 Plus system. And I think I'm going to be using this for quite a while. It's going to come in very in handy, especially placed up in that corner next to the actual router where I can store and back up all of my previous video content and I don't have to have it on my actual machine. And this way I can access it anywhere in the world, wherever I am, and it comes in handy, especially if I'm traveling. So I'm going to include links in the description box below for the NAS system and some hard drives if you want to grab yourself one because now they are having a Prime Day discount. So there's going to be over 25% off on certain products on their website and Amazon. So now is probably the best time to grab yourself a NAS system, especially the DXP 4800 Plus, if you are planning to get one for yourself. With the hard drives and stuff, I'll link some of them as well in the description box below, as well as other compatible ones. You can use the link down there to find out which ones are compatible because you may want some faster ones. Whereas I'm actually liking these silent ones that are in here now at the minute. Now, like I did mention, I'm not a network specialist. So if you do have any questions about this, something I can't answer, Hopefully someone out there that knows the answer to it can reply in the comments box below and then we can all learn something. And I appreciate you watching. If I did earn your subscription, hit that subscribe button down below. Like the video if you liked it. Share it with friends and family who might also be interested in getting a NAS system because this is a very beginner friendly one. And I will catch you on the next one. I appreciate you watching. Peace.